We're talking today with Jay Meng Zhao and Ryder Pierce, the co-founders of a very interesting organization called Sherpa Share. It works in the ride service business and it provides services both to drivers and to uh, other people, companies interested in this business. So we're very interested in learning more about what you do, why you founded your organization, and where it's going. So welcome, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thanks for having us. So tell me, what is Sherpa Share? What is it that you do? Yeah, so um, Sherpa Share is a financial management and a communication platform for on-demand workers. And uh, we basically offer them um, to access, uh, basically offer them an uh, independent and neutral platform to access information, utility, and the work opportunities to maximize their work. And tell me a little bit about why you formed this organization. What, uh, what led you to do it? Um, the fundamental reason is we see uh, there's a you know, fundamental conflict between on-demand services and the workers. And uh, workers typically working for multiple services and uh, they have growing challenges to manage their work and understand that all the work options and uh, they don't have loyalty to any services. Um, at the same time, companies are competing for the same supply pool and uh, they have very high acquisition cost. And uh, so we think a certain uh, party, a buffer layer in between can benefit both sides. So that's why uh, we position us to serve that need. Mm -hmm. And so who do you define as your customers for your services? So typically it's been uh, rideshare drivers is who we've started with. Um, and those typically Uber, Lyft, um, formerly Sidecar, and, and delivery companies as well, although we'd like to expand to other independent drivers. And do the uh, companies themselves come to you f with ideas for your services or ask you for uh, either information on, uh, that's helpful to them as well? Um, some, yeah, especially for smaller players. So basically they're looking for a channel to acquire supplies. Um, but for the, actually, for the workers, they're also looking for a third party channel to exchange information as well, yeah. Yeah, what I find fascinating is you characterize Sherpa Share as an intermediary, not as a representative or an advocate for one party or the other. Tell me more about how that works and why you're positioning uh, uh, Sherpa Share in this kind of middle category. What do each of the different stakeholders get uh, from your services? Yeah, so um, as I said, like uh, most of the workers are actually working for multiple services. So because they are working for multiple services, they need tools to manage their earnings from different sources. Uh, track their personal expenses, understand their tax liability, right? navigate increasingly more, uh, more working options. And uh, no single animal service can actually provide uh, you know, necessary tools to help them. Um, and on the other sa side is animal services are very powerful and workers are actually on the weak side. And they, don't, they are forced into a silo situation. So that's why we think like uh, Super share uh, as a third party can provide a value on both sides, make the transaction more smooth and efficient. Yeah. Good. Yeah. For example, so the the, the workers um, don't have loyalty, as Jay Z said, and so um, workers need a place where they can manage their multiple work options, and also communicate with each other and exchange information. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem the companies are having is they basically don't have a good way to uh, demand loyalty or command loyalty. And that's, that's one of the things we see they're struggling with quite a bit. How do they actually convince a driver who has multiple options to work for them? Mm -hmm. And that's in many ways the challenge of the on-demand economy where you don't have a direct employer and employee relationship uh, in place uh, so that the, the interaction is a little bit uh, more fluid. So I think that's a, a very interesting point. So your, uh, your services come via an app. Take me through the app. If I'm a driver, what do I do? How do I get access to it? What will I learn by uh, using your app? 
Yeah, so our service actually uh, have a mobile app. We also have a website. So uh, we provide a tool to help you to consolidate all your earnings into one place. We also use a mobile app to track your expense automatically. Now, since currently we're focused on the drivers, so the biggest expense for them actually is the mileage. So we track the mileage for them automatically. We also have a so-called heat map, which is a cross-sourced uh, map show where the hotspot for the drivers in real time. So they can, based on the heat map, decide when and where to work for which service. And uh, uh, we also have a so-called chat feature, so kind of chat room, so drivers can, you know, uh, get help, get support from other drivers. Um, yeah, that's basically what we have now. Um, yeah. Actually, we are launching a new app. Uh, As of last is, week, yeah. we launched a brand new app that basically took the chat feature and gave it its own home. Um, mm -hmm. So when we launched the chat in our existing app, and we found that uh, drivers, it was a strong need for drivers to communicate with each other, to ask questions, uh, to give status updates. What's it like downtown right now? For example, when does the game get out? And so last week we launched a new app dedicated to basically uh, allowing drivers to exchange information. Yeah, called so a super share pass. Yeah. Re real time exchange where, was, for example, when when I came in this morning, I posted something saying, "Hey, we're going to be." in Boston talking about driver issues, anything you want us to talk about. And we had several drivers right away respond. <laughs> couple, couple of the points were, you know, let, repeat, ad, Uber should add tips for drivers. So that was, that was one that drivers would get home. Add tips was the one. Uh, and a few others um, basically saying that drivers want to communicate more. So mm -hmm. like if companies can do more or if we can do more to help drivers communicate, it's a strong need. That's very interesting that drivers are they operate independently, separately. They're all in their own vehicle and so on. But they're looking for some sense of community and communications. That's, uh, and that's a service that you can provide. That's very interesting. Yeah. There are like a two fundamental need drivers need. The number one is always financial need. The second need actually we call social need. So basically, they need a channel to talk about their career. And so basically they talk to passengers every day, but they need to talk to other drivers, talk about their company, talk about their you know, so-called career in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we want to become that channel. Yeah. Well, that's a fascinating uh, opportunity for people to do it in a modern way. Do you know if this creates any social networking where people, drivers actually physically get together and form communities or is it all online? It, both, actually. Yeah, there is yeah, some offline. Both. We see yeah. more. Um, I mean, online is the big one because everyone has different schedules, and so it's hard to align. But traditional employment, of course, had lunch, break, the break room, the water cooler, which doesn't exist for mm -hmm. the drivers. And so, the, I mean, we would like to replicate the online chat as the, the, the water cooler area. Mm -hmm. We do see in some cities where there are a lot of drivers, the drivers will coordinate, hey, I'm taking a break. Um, at this coffee shop now and and try to get a few people together so yeah. we so it's kind of the beauty of our platform drivers can organize um, mm -hmm. whatever they want mm -hmm. whether that's discussions or offline meetups yeah. mm -hmm. another name another name for on-demand industry some people call O2O which is uh, online to offline or offline to online actually our community is very interesting we develop a community from offline to online but eventually, we also want to bring online to offline in some way. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, there's all kinds of opportunities for that kind of kind of interaction. Well, let's let's talk more specifically about the drivers and how they are doing financially. Uh, the, you're providing both information for helping them build a social network, but also to assess their own financial uh, situation. Uh, what are you hearing from drivers? What what can you say about uh, how they are doing uh, financially now and over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the biggest thing we found um, at a fundamental level was a lot of these drivers are first time independent workers. And so understanding expenses, mileage tracking uh, wasn't really there. So they didn't have a basis for that. And so what that meant was whatever Uber and Lyft and other companies marketed to them at they say $35 an hour, um, drivers didn't have a good sense of what their actual net earnings was. And that's why we started, that's how we started, basically showing them, here's what you're actually making. 
Um, another uh, issue we saw was, um, yeah, that basically drivers didn't know how to optimize their work. And um, so those are the couple of things we've helped them with. And so we put out reports every once in a while that show trends in different cities. Um, and we do see that, you know, earnings per trip, I mean, they do fluctuate. So in some cities they go up, some they go down. Of course, people's schedules are vastly different. So it's, um, it's always been very difficult to, to point to a trend in, in either direction. Mm -hmm. um, but, but what I will say is that uh, we, we noticed that the vast majority of these workers are doing this for supplemental income. And so this might be 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week. Um, and that's in the range of, they might make a couple hundred dollars more in addition to full-time work. What do you hear from the drivers themselves? What would they like Sherpa Share to do? Um, they, they definitely like, uh, always want to make more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so whatever we do can increase their uh, income, uh, they, they will love it. So we basically organize our service in three buckets. Right? The first one is, um, help them to sort of like manage, uh, count their money, right? Manage their money. Uh, second is basically how to help them to optimize their income. Mm -hmm. The third bucket is basically how to help them make more money. So uh, if you look at our services, basically we provide some personal utility tools, so help them to count their money. Mm -hmm. Then we build a community, so uh, with uh, some cross-sourced information so they can make uh, better decisions every day. Hopefully they can optimize their work and uh, maximize income. Mm -hmm. The third thing we eventually will, will do is connect them with new working opportunities so we can, they can make more money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's how, what the drivers uh, get from you. Uh, what's your revenue model? How do you uh, survive and, and, and uh, you have investors now uh, as a startup organization, but you are a for-profit business. So what's the, the model for generating revenue? Yeah, so um, we are uh, an intermediate layer between the animal services and the workers. And uh, so we, we also uh, a layer between workers and uh, other worker-related services and a worker and a consumer, right? So we eventually will make money from every relationship. So we will start with uh, some premium services on the worker side, uh, then try to make up some money uh, on the company side uh, through some marketing and uh, lead gen kind of things. Yeah. So marketing uh, opportunities for companies and pay for services from drivers for a more premium kind of information and, and uh, material. Exactly. exactly. So an example of that would be um, what's most valuable to drivers now is tracking mileage because that's a direct number they can look at and use for tax deduction. Right. And so that's something where a lot of other utility services charge for and drivers are willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one example on the, the worker side, they'll pay for that utility. And the, the, the company side, they'll see that there's a network of drivers who have a certain level of experience in the space. And of course those are um, potential uh, drivers that they want to target. Mm -hmm. So that's, of course, they're interested in both acquiring those drivers and then once they've acquired them, convincing them to work on a certain day. Yeah, so, so in some respects you can be a recruiting agency or help them to identify the pool of uh, potential uh, drivers for them. So that's a, that's a really important service because that must be very difficult. What, what do you find is, how stable are these drivers? How long do they stay? Do they turn over a lot? Uh, what's, what? your experience telling you? Yeah. There's yeah, there, quite, quite there's high. some natural churn for this industry. Yeah, and uh, um, sometimes we use a metaphor uh, travel industry, so more like, more like, a, for a, like a travel industry. Travel like, a, like a every family, they might travel two to three times a year, something like that. But for this industry, more like uh, people will on and off uh -huh. uh, kind of thing. Um, so for us, it's more like uh, we provide a platform with data and information that Whenever they decide to, you know, do something in this industry, they will go to Shopify, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, with uh, the industry become more mature, the hourly rate higher, I think people will find that this is more a legit, viable work option for them, make a living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So an example of that would be um, someone who w onboards with Uber, for example, might only really want that income for a month or a week even to, to have some supplemental income and then leave for six months. And that's a pattern we see where people really want supplemental income for a fixed period of time and then they might leave. And mm -hmm. the question that we're always wondering is, at, and we believe at some point they'll come back because they'll want extra income. It's a question of like when, when's the next phase of their, of their life where they'll need supplemental income. Mm -hmm. So it could be, students is a good example where students will, um, on, our, on our way over here we had an Uber driver who was also a full-time student and a full-time driver and he fits in his driving when he's a student. But after he's done, after he graduates, he'll probably find a full-time job and scale back mm -hmm. on the driving. Mm -hmm. So you fit it into sort of the life course as people's uh, uh, life changes and, and responsibilities change and time allocations change. Right. And the, uh, the other end is when people are um, older and they have more free time, they'll also become drivers as well. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of controversies in this industry, as you know. Uh, questions about whether the drivers should be independent contractors or employees, concerns uh, on some chat uh, rooms and uh, various online uh, uh, link, linking uh, mechanisms that uh, Uber doesn't really care about the drivers. What are you hearing? Where, where are you positioned? Do you hear these kinds of things? Do you see them as credible? What's your view of some of the critiques of this industry at the moment? <clears throat> I, I think some concerns are, are true in some degree. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we are kind of happy that we see some other groups uh, supporting workers as well. And uh, we are very honored to be a very important channel for drivers to voice up their concerns. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually want to take a neutral independent position. I think the entire on-demand industry need protection, right? So basically, we definitely need to protect workers, but we also need to protect the, the service side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the, the better way is, you know, collect data, um, build some channels, allow them to communicate. Uh, I think eventually they will find a balance somewhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I think this, this role of uh, providing information as a, as a basis for fostering more communications uh, between all of the parties who have a stake in this industry is, is an important service that you're, you're providing. So help me uh, envision where you will be five years from now. What will Sherpa Share look like if you are successful? Um, we want to become the number one support platform for on-demand workers uh, around the globe. And so currently we are only focused on the driver, driver vertical, only in the U.S. market. Uh, but we want to expand to other vertical and other regions as well. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's we, our hope in the next mm -hmm. five years. Yeah. So basically all those workers will be exchanging information on our platform. And so whatever, whatever service they want to work for, whatever opinion they have, they'll use Sherpa Share as like their, the exchange for that information. Yeah. So the, 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 your point earlier about giving them a voice is something we really want to emphasize. So yeah. we don't necessarily care what the voice is, but we, we give you the channel to basically express yourself. Yeah. The ultimate uh, vision I'm thinking is, it's more like a, a driver say, I have eight hours to work, and uh, Shippashir can put up a po working portfolio for him so he can hit his financial goal on a daily basis. Yeah. So they can look at where the optimal opportunities are, what times of day, what days of the week, and how to balance that with all of their other responsibilities and be efficient in making those choices. Well, it's very interesting. It's a very creative organization. We appreciate your sharing your insights with you, with us for this course. Uh, we wish you all the best and uh, thank you very much for taking the time to come across the country. You don't have an Uber service in the air yet, so I guess you had to um, go by commercial airline until you land and then you could. Right. <laughs> we didn't take Uber helicopter. You didn't take Uber helicopter. Well, maybe someday that, uh, that'll be part of all of our future. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.